Okay, today I hope is the day where we get the weapons and the cards. So we're going to work in Houdini a little bit. And I should already have one ready for export, but if not, I'll prepare one for export and we'll get it into Unreal. Then we'll shove it inside of one of those cards. We're also going to need to make the cards data uh, data driven. So I should have already created a struct for that. So we'll look through all those things and get it all set up. All right, here we go. So let's look at the card data struct here. Should already be one. Let's see. This card mod, this is it. Okay, so we have cost, title, description, tabs, it shows stats, stats power. Okay, so we have all this stuff. Um, what we aren't including, though, is a graphic. So that hasn't been thought out very well yet. Um, so we're starting with the hardest thing and then going backwards. The hardest thing is a, is a 3D model in the card. So we're gonna we're gonna begin there. Um, there's some technology that we haven't worked out yet, like doing like portals in the cards. So I haven't worked that out just yet. And so I think for now we're not going to worry too much about it. Uh, but that is something that will be done to to make it to make it better. So we have this BP card, and so I think we'll start with with this this independent object here. So we have this viewport. We'll click on this. All right. So this needs a way to like load in a model dynamically, and I've only done this once. So let me pull up that example here. So BP vaporgram initialize with random ship. So I have this event that we call it and it does a get data table row names. I did a video on this earlier, uh, maybe a few weeks ago. And it grabs this data table row. And can I just crack this open? No, oh, show me. Yeah, cool. We're going to open this data table. And so what this guy does is it has a row name and then it points to a blueprint. And this long, ugly, scary string is what we need to build a list of. So we'll create some weapon blueprint cards. And uh, no, not weapon blueprint cards. Uh, this one I want to do a little differently. We're going to create the weapon blueprints that are meant to be put inside the cards, but we're not going to make the whole card. So what's different about this, uh, when we have the swan, I think it's here. So this one derived from BP card. This other approach that we're going to take, uh, I did this in Unity and it worked really well. Uh, so when I made the 3D cards there, we had the card, but then the card would load in uh, the asset because we're going to have flat images and other things going on in here. So it's not always going to be the same thing. And I don't want to create five different cards for each weapon or, you know, I kind of want to do that. So that's why we're going to, we're not going to, we're not going to approach it the same way. If there's only one super decked out card like this. This is a very special view. And so it is used in a very specific way. And so it can, it has different rules, but the, anything that's, being managed within the BP card needs to just pull, just pull in the asset. We don't want to pull in another card because uh, we already have that right here. Okay, so that's what makes this a little bit different. All right, let me see. So we're going to kind of replicate this whole thing. So let's go here. We're going to make another data table and ship refs. So right now I have it in developer tables. Maybe that's okay. So let's, let's just do that. I kind of just want to copy it. Uh, I think one more thing. Can I open the... I need to show in Explorer. Because it's being driven by a JSON object. Show in Explorer. I need to show this. It's a little difficult. 
So this guy, this is the source. So I much prefer working like this, like having control, because then I can like set things up with automation and, and stuff. If I have this serialized data I can work with. But uh that might be a little tough to work with. And what I've noticed is it doesn't show up in here. And it, every time you turn on the editor, it says the file has changed. And it tries to re-import it, which nothing has really changed. So I'm not sure what to do about that. Um, like how to how to make this work. Originally, I thought this might make it more moddable. But I'm not sure if this will work post-build. Anyways, I guess that's that's an aside. For now, what we want to do is make the first weapon uh, asset. Let's see how do we how should we organize this? I guess we'll make one called do weapons. For for I guess complex things, I've been putting them out in their own folders because these have like so many different components, and I, I think weapons might be similar. Otherwise, if it if I think it's going to be simple, I'll put it in as art. Uh, like the gear is really is a really simple asset, and then uh, like music, like sound isn't isn't a c complex. I can, but I don't know. This could be flawed a flawed way to organize it. We're not using the diary anymore. The desk is quite simple. We're not even using VP desk currently. That's going to be something later. A VP card is getting sophisticated and technically this is an extension of VP card but the weapons also need to work in like battle scene and stuff. So it could be the case that they have multiple they get as, as complicated as this so the card can probably be pulled out. Yet I don't want to pull it away from its menu relationship. It's organizing stuff. Difficult. So I'll just put it at top level here for now. And then let's see which weapon do we want to pull up. Go to Houdini. Uh, okay. So it looks like what I have in here right now is the same old thing. So I have the rail gun. This is probably outdated. Up in template size. Okay. So there's animations and stuff for this. Similar similar to the ships. Like we could do control rig stuff here. Uh, I don't I don't want to say I haven't done anything. We're gonna just, we're just gonna do a static model export. Like we're not gonna worry about all of that at the moment. So let's see what we got. I might need to pull up the ship and to get the to get the right export. Because there's a way to do it so that it it imports correctly with Unreal. But it's been a minute. I'm trying to. Th think if I've done this in a while for Unreal, if it's still set up for Unity. So it looks like I might have already exported it. Uh, URP VAT show. Yeah, this is this is still set up for Unity. So it's been a minute. I, I think this might work. There's no because the FBX file, it has to be like a certain version or it has problems. Let's see. The shaders we don't, we don't need anymore, but these are the EXR files. Hmm. Well, we'll try and see what we can get with what already is there. So I'm going to come to my export. Nanite. Let's see, I don't. That's not it. Hmm. There is this crate. This is an old gun. There's railgun FBX. 
Yeah, we'll just try pulling these in and just, I just need a static model to kind of get started. Like the shape is more important right now than anything else. We just need to get a shape in. So we'll pull in, let's create a new folder. We'll call this Railgun. And we'll likely need to make, yeah, we'll need a reference to this. So we need, we not, you might need to make a blueprint that captures all the nuance, but I don't know what I'm doing yet, so I have to make something. So we'll start with one, and maybe we'll end up replicating it. I'll have to combine them into a single blueprint, like common functionality. But okay, so for the time being, let's just drag and drop this guy in. Drag the FBX in. So we'll let it build Nanite. Let's see, I wish I could select profiles be like, this is a static mesh, and I want these settings. But right now, if you're importing things differently, then it'll it'll adjust things. I'm just going to try and use mostly defaults, but there's certain, certain things that might be an issue like this. But I'll, I'll just deal with it for now. Skeleton, yeah, I'll just import. Anytime I import unit, Unreal freezes, so I'll come back. And there we go. Okay, so it looks like it updated. It complains about stuff, but it hardly matters right now. All right, let's go to the scene. So map, we have a test scene for weapons. Map, yeah, sure. Okay, so here we go. Um, What's next? So yeah, here's this obnoxious thing with the sequencer not working, but when you hit play, it should work. Yeah, so see how the drawer pops out. It really agitates me that it doesn't just stay out. Because I, I don't want sequencer open all the time, but it seems like you have to have it open to get the scene to be, yeah, I don't know. Okay, uh, let's get that weapon. Okay, so let's open this guy up and just take a look. So it's really tiny. I'm not even gonna try and fix that. I'm just gonna create a blueprint for it. And then... So for now, we'll just make a derive from actor. So BP railgun. So we can say weapon card. Uh, it's kind of deceptive. Um, I don't want to call it a card. It is related to the card, but. Window. So eventually we plan to make it a kind of a a portal. So we could call it a window or a portal. Uh, maybe I'll choose portal. Man, that can be a little confusing. Uh, I'm trying to think of a name that, because we're going to be using this a lot. So that's yeah, really long. <laughs> so one drawback this content menu. I kind of prefer it be list, but I actually, I don't know how to change this thing, the layout. I, I sort of like that, but I want the preview at the same time. So I'm not sure how to get everything. I think you have to, oh, here we go, list. Yeah, this is kind of my, I prefer seeing it like this so I can get the names in. All right. So we have this guy, let's crack it open. Um, where Where's your data only blueprint? Why? That's weird. Okay, I'll drag this guy in, just make the scene root. I'll fix the scale. Probably needs to be like 100. And the rotation's probably wrong. So for the time being, and this might even be too big, so we're just going to start with this. Okay, so this is our blueprint, and we'll need to create that data table now, so we have something to reference. 
I kind I, I'm thinking that yeah we need to make a we need to make that class right now to derive it from or else it's gonna be a challenge so I'll make that now so say BP weapon window and really it's just gonna be here so that we can come in here and make it make its parent that class so we go to class settings BP weapon window so all this setup like isn't going to have to be done again but I figured I might as well capture it so that you understand what's going on whenever you have to make a new one so now it has this parent class why did it blow up um, I don't really know why it blew up so big but I don't know why I did that but it did okay so then we have that so w the reason we're doing that before the data table is so that we can say what type that column is and we'll say it's that type so it will only accept types that match we could make it take any actor but I I suspect we're going to be adding in function calls. Once we do that, then it's going to get it's going to get complicated to try and support every type. Uh, so tables, yeah. So we'll come here. Let's make a new data table. Probably just copy and paste to. I have to find it in the menu again. So then we're going to say. T weapon window refs. Okay, so we'll crack this open. Then, so the names of the weapons right now, I wouldn't worry about them too much, but we'll just pull up some data just to kind of express. Oh goodness. Yeah, to express some of this. Okay, so here's some definitions. I'm going to release all this at some point. Uh, like, just make it a public repo, because it's, it's just a mod repo. But it has all the weapon definitions. So, a railgun. Right now, so we want to use the ID, but you're not going to... Well, first off, you're not going to have access to this repo. Secondly... It doesn't have all the weapons that we've made so far. Like that, we've modeled so many more weapons than what's in here, and there's some things we haven't modeled yet either. Because either I don't, I don't know if we want to do them anymore, or I don't have a mock for it. We don't have a uh, concept art for it. So there's, anyways. So uh, that's why I'm going to say we're not going to worry about the name too much. But in general, we know that we're going to use the ID, and the format of an ID is going to use minus sign and all be all lowercase so whatever the name is just try and follow that syntax and then we can probably add the data file later to, to power it uh, but for yeah so just for now that's what we'll do can I how do I change this oh maybe I can't I, know, I thought there was a way to edit this I How do you oh here we go class okay yeah so you can click on this row editor down here and then this lets you change it so we can we can manually grab these files in here and just build this data table out but I'm thinking at the moment this is not going to work or because I can't make it so let me delete it. I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to start typing data table. Hopefully it works. Is that right? Common UI input action data table? No, that was not right. Okay. <laughs> Row structure. Oh, we have to make a pick a structure. Uh, we had to make a, a structure first. I forgot about that. 
Where is that even at? I should store that right next to it. If I crack this open, how do I see the structure? Row structure. Yeah, there we go. You're inside of Vaporgram. Oh. Interesting. Well, I guess by that standard, because this is used specifically for the Vaporgram, I could probably move the table out to get rid of the table folder. Um, I'm a little conflicted on where to organize that. I think I'm going to keep the table folder uh, and then move this into the, as it's, yeah, so let me do that and then we'll kind of follow the same pattern for the new one. Okay. Organization gets important, otherwise you, you start losing things. All right, so let's make a structure. So we're going to call this S weapon window ref. I'm just going to name it the same thing, basically. Then we're going to have the, I believe it needs to be name and then the class. Oh no, it's just, it's just class. And then it specifically has to be this purple one, which is class reference. If it's object reference, that will not work. Mistake I made last time. Makes total sense, but it's easy to, to get them mixed up. So, yeah, this will just be class. And the name here is superfluous. I just, I think it should be called class. So we can call it whatever we want. But And then we're going to do BP window. Oh, it's weapon window, isn't it? All right. And then, again, making sure that this is a class reference, which I already messed up. Come on, you. Wow, what is happening here? Okay, weapon window. Not recognizing my own name. Okay, so we'll save that. And then when we create the data table, now we can we can point to this. So now let's do data table. Cool. We can pick the row structure S weapon window ref. Okay. Uh, and we'll do dt weapon window ref. Cool. Here we are. So it's basically the same. And so now we should be able to add a row and stuff. Just do this by hand. Um, so the name. Can I just mess with this? Yeah. So we can just do rail gun like it we talked about and then the class uh, we can just grab and see how it even just gives you a list already so this one is nothing but then this is our, our real gun so then there we go we can save that so we can add another one and this could be other gun and same deal we could pull down the list and you know so you can keep adding them like that okay so that's our data table Save all these files. Close this guy. All right, so we're going to copy some stuff from the Vapogram. This is doing a random spawn, which this isn't even necessarily right um, for what we want, but it just has these function names, which I haven't memorized yet. Like get data table row. So we want to be able to get it with this row name. So when it finds it, then we can spawn actor. And so that's the main thing we want to do. Um, so we need to, when a card is spawned, we need to be able to initialize it with a weapon. So there's a lot of things to, to do here. Uh, so let's just get going. If I, there should be a configure card already. Yeah, so here's a configure card method. I haven't organized these functions yet. Um, so some, some blueprints are more organized than others, like the the Vaporgram also isn't terribly organized. Okay, well, I don't have a great example at this second, but we have configure card, which is passing in all of these parameters. It's really just passing in a uh, card mod struct. 
looked at this guy. So I was passing in this card Modstruct. I want to say part of that mod is going to need to be a hmm, card window. Wait, it needs to be more generic because it's not just going to have weapons. It's going to have other components too. So I think I might have gotten too specific here. So I'm actually going to rename this BP. We're going to call it BP card window which its purpose will be to capture any component. So this is now no longer specific to weapons. We're going to pull it out into card. It shouldn't change anything because we haven't put anything in that yet. And this should still work with our data table and everything. So, so you can see card window here. So it changes like everything updates. So that's nice. Okay. So we did that because there's other types of cards and they'll be other little window graphics we're going to create. Okay, so configure card, but we need to now update the structure on the card to support that. So we're going to say window graphic. See how I keep changing the names? <laughs> trying, to, trying to refine the idea down. So this will be a BP card window. And uh, yeah, we're, it's going to be a class reference. Window graphic. Card graphic. BP weapon window. Yeah, I guess that's all right. Um, Okay, yeah, so we're going to add that in. Sure, check it out. Okay, so we have all these things in here. The BP card now has this window graphic. And so we can use this to spawn. And you can see all this stuff going on in here. So we can add, I, I, try, to, I try to organize this well, but you can see how there's a lot of things to do, so we have to work through each problem individually. So this is a, yet another thing to, to handle. So we'll go ahead and um, actually, I need the right pieces. So we can get data, table, row name. Oh shoot, we don't need, we need a string. And we don't know what type it is. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so, all right. I'm actually realizing something. We don't... I'm realizing that we actually don't need to make this specific for weapons. Uh, where's that data table? It's not just weapon window ref. It's all types it's um yeah it is it's not weapon specific we can use any id and handle so all the assets can go into here so we're not going to have to this can be renamed as well just to keep it so we can reuse this for the other components on the ship as well like the the graphic the graphic pattern will be the same, uh, whether or not they have a 3D model. So, like, we're trying to be adaptive to where if there's a missing 3D model or something, it'll kind of it'll it'll roll down the quality tier. And so, we're probably going to add that in. Uh, let's see. But right at this moment, we're not we're not going to be concerned about it. But I think there's going to be a time where we add in the highest quality level. So I, I guess I'll put it in an example. So like real gun. I, I want to say the qual highest quality level is six or seven. But then, yeah, you could have another one. Uh, 
and you know this could have a different a different blueprint so this is how I did it before and so it would roll it would the code would just look for anything so it would look for anything railgun but this is kind of how we can how we can um, support different different quality levels and then there was a fallback so like if it couldn't find anything it might just use like a blank image or a black image uh, so anywho yeah that's so we can do that so for now um, for now we'll just yeah I want to say it's six is the, the legendary one but which it has the 3d model so we can use that for the time being I think I'm out of time but I'll try and squeeze one more thing. Where are we? Let's try and get the spawn going real quick. Okay, so now when we do this data table row by name, that'll make a lot more sense. I'm just going to kind of hard code the get. And yeah, I think this is all the logic we want right there. Getting the spawn position will be another bit of calculations to figure out. Okay, let's just get anything spawned. I think that would be a win for this session. So this is expecting a mod window graphic already, but I think what we actually need is the serialized form. So like I was incorrect. So we're gonna say um, we actually don't don't want this here. We want the ID simply. We just want the ID, which is gonna be a string. And this is a crucial go to the top. Whenever uh, Unreal is full screen, you can't grab this. See that? I can't get the. So I want it at the top, but I'll just let it go for now. Organize that later. Uh, so then over here. The ID is what we will use to get the can I get data table. Get data table row. Yeah, row name. There we go. There we go. We're probably doing a typecast. Okay, so this should be a direct lookup. Now, we're going to make this smarter later. Right? So to do look up quality levels. But right now it's not going to do that. And <clears throat> we're going to do a string append. <clears throat> we're just going to attach dash 6 to this for the time being. Just kind of, you know, just just sort of hack this together. So right now it's not actually going to be doing that, but it's just stubbed in. And then the data table is card window row. And the row is found. If it's not found, here's where we do our default image logic. But for now, we're just going to, we're not going to ignore that. Uh, do I need this? Oh, no, I don't need that because we already have the out row here. And then we can break this. I can probably... Yeah, just split it here. Simplify that a little bit. Spawn actor none. Okay, so the this is going to be wrong, uh, but it'll at least spawn it. So whenever we call, uh, whenever we call this configure card, it can it can do this. And is invalid. Yeah, I need to make a transform then, huh? I guess we can start with this, which is just going to set it at the root position. Then we can deal with the relative location stuff as we as we go. Okay, it's going to mess with the scale even, which I, I don't think I want this to. I don't want it to do that. Not yet. It's just sort of leave it be, and I, no offset. Just spawn it at the root. And what are you grabbing about? There you go. Okay, spawn actor. 
Now, the only other thing is, <clears throat> yeah, frozen not found it. This shouldn't even fire. So that's that's all right. And it won't be for like the other ships and stuff that we already have. Okay, what's left here? Um, Okay, we need a call configure. So if we look at the BP card hand, you can see we're doing this cheeky cheeky thing here, where it's just passing in a number. So we're looping through and we're doing a for each loop on this array. But you know, we're we're not really utilizing anything. So what we want to do is actually make a list of card configs. So let's do that. So this is card rotations, there's cards. I already do this. This is, um, yeah, these are the card, so card refs. Let's rechange that name. And then I'm going to make another one called cards, which is actually card defs. Not to be confused with refs, definitions. So this will be s card mod. This will be a list. And this will hold the definition. So now, we pull this guy in. So we can do a set, like right? just kind of manually set them. Oh, of course not. Okay, well, there's another way to do this. And it is to just do them right in here. So now we have a way to configure this. And we can do something like this. Railgun. We don't want to do the dash six because that determines quality level. So the quality level will have as a another quality, and then it's probably going to be an enumeration. But for now, I'm just going to shove it as an int, uh, and then you know. So, but later I'm going to I'll make it an enum, which will translate to an integer. But it'll be nicer to work with. Okay, so we have that. And I can actually kind of combine this already so it'll, there we go. Okay, so there's that. And what have we here? So instead of looping over this array of numbers, we would loop over Where's quality at? I don't see a. Should have updated there. There it is. So we can put in like six. All right. So with that, um, so instead of looping over this array, I don't. I'm not gonna have time to change this. Um, but basically, we're gonna. We would do this. It's gonna break. We have to do another for each loop. It doesn't let. It's a little annoying, but you can't. You can't replace it. Once it has a type, you can't replace it. So we we'll have to like do all this. So, but I will come back. I'm gonna just update this. So now we're gonna be looping over card devs, which presently is just one card. We'll see how that handles. In a moment. All right. So the rate index. I, there's probably a way to like. Ah, alt is not the right button. I've seen it. You can like grab these. Okay, I'm holding down control. Yeah, that'll make it a lot easier. So kind of can this. So setting the card count, we'll need to put a head in the passes right here. So let me see if we go. We need to run length to get the card count. create this same kind of bead here. So we'll set the card count and we'll replace this guy. And we can also also pass this over here. I don't think it's being used anywhere else. It's just Okay, and all of these are just for testing the 
number of cards, but we can start shoving those tests in here. It might get a little bit more sophisticated to do that testing. Like I think maybe what we'll do is we'll add a whole bunch of cards and then we can, if we want to test smaller numbers, we'll just truncate the list uh, right here. And that's how we'll test it going forward. But anyways, so we'll just kind of move from that, move on from now. So then I'm not sure what that first one was doing. The sequence isn't doing anything else. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was doing. I'm just not going to mess with that right now. Let's run this. Okay, let's go back to the map. Let's hit play. It should just spawn one thing. Okay, now it is only spawning one card, which is great, but the reason why we're not seeing the weapon up here is because we're not calling configure card. So before we just had the number and we were taking this rate index and we run all the way over here, find its position. All this logic is, just, is to figure out both where the card goes and like its rotation size. So this is spawning the card. And as we get the card, we do certain things to it. Like we let it know that it has a parent and we uh, are just keeping track of it for animation. But we're not calling configure. So what we can do is call configure, right? Try this configure card. Now it wants to take in an argument of mod. Just gonna connect this in. There's probably a way to like drop it in. I just don't know how to do it. I'm trying to keep these lines. The rule of thumb was to keep the line, the white line straight, the primary function call. You see how this like blue one kind of gets wacky, but it generally flows. So mod is, that's going to come from way over here in the for loop, array element. So it gets kind of, eh, it's going to just draw a line like straight through this whole thing. So sometimes I'll set like a temp variable uh, just to avoid stuff like this because it starts to, I don't know, it just kind of bugs me, especially stuff like this, this clustering here, it's hard to see. Um, but now that it's before when it was just the same object over and over again, kind of splayed out, it's, I kind of, I'll let it go, but this, uh, see, I'm already having a hard time seeing, they're both like blue colors, so I'm just going to can it, and then we'll create a local variable, and this is going to be a card mod, and usually I, I'll do it with underscore to just be a clear indication that it's local, and then this is a, uh, We'll call it current card mod. Over here, we'll just use get. And it still has a pretty way of writing it. Doesn't let me keep my debug looking name with the underscore. That's all right, though. And call set right here. And that should prevent the weirdo long connection. So this configure card should work. Card mode, I guess I probably need to set in hand. I, I suppose I, don't, I might not need to even do that, but also card mode might not be even the right answer. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, so now we see all these zero. The zero and it's all default stuff. So if we come here to card diffs, let's like manipulate this a little bit more. So maybe this, uh, what does a real gun cost? Let's grab the actual data and just get something. Nope. Oh, stop it. All right. Yeah, Windows has this fantastic feature where if you bump your window to the edge, it closes everything, which I <laughs> absolutely hate that. Uh, all right, so cost five. So you can, like, grab some of this stuff. And, yeah, this is kind of old, but just throw some things in there. So this cost five. Description, you can call it real gun. And then, you know, yeah, none of these, these things aren't relevant uh, for this card. And that'll turn on the stats and tabs. We don't want tabs on it. 
So yeah, that should do. So we can just take compile, go there, and then, all right, cool. So we have some configuration. The text isn't showing up, which is a little bizarre. So if we get a BB card, my description. Yeah, I thought that would work. Description widget. Not certain. I'm not certain why that wouldn't why that wouldn't work because it's the same exact logic as title. And the title worked. So they're they're virtually the same widget. That they just have slightly different styling. But okay. Anyways, all right. So the next thing we want to do. So this should be doing quality level uh, lookup. But uh, also I don't want to. I want to fall back. So I should have that behavior so that we don't have to have everything built out. And if it doesn't find it, I want to know because I think that's what's happening. Print string. I say cannot, can't find a card window ref in DT. I forgot the name of the table already. Card window ref. Just call it data table. Right. Let's get a Okay, so uh if that happened, it happened really quick. All right, I don't see that log coming up. It should have come up right away. So it is doing something. I so then I guess what's happening then is it must be spawning it in a really bad spot. Or it's really tiny or really massive. Where are you, man? So let's look for it. Hmm. Here's this BP window Rogan. So it's somewhere in the scene. Oh yeah, here it is, way over here. Okay, so it's doing it like at the root. Assuming at the root scene. Okay, so it is spawning. We see it's really wrong. So, okay. So that's success. Just getting it in there. So our, our spawn algorithm is working. That's why we're not seeing this error here. Or that alternate path. So it is finding it and it's spawning it. All right. So this will need to be adjusted. So right now default scene root, which it throws me off. Oh, okay. I see. This is doing uh, an absolute spawn transform, and this I think is going to grab. No, oh, it's saying world transform. Oh, but then I'm not using it. Well, that'll do. So we'll want to like probably add something to this, like do a relative offset. But honestly, I don't want to use default scene root anyways. I just wanted to get it in there. So now that we have that, let's create a point an anchor of some kind to, to grab onto. I've seen these things called slots somewhere, you know, sockets, but I think that, I think it's attached to the skeleton, the skeletal mesh. So we might be able to use that. Uh, like we probably can. Uh, I don't want to do that though, like I don't want to attach it to the skeleton specifically, I kind of just want to position something within this Unreal Blueprint and control it in here. I don't want to have to go to the skeleton editor to modify the slot. Although that might be the right way to do things, or like an ideal way to do things. I'm just going to try and find a blank entity. Okay. Is there something that's like an empty... You can, Unity for example, you can create empty game objects and they just hold the transform. So, I might just need to Google something like null. I don't want to put a mesh in for something like this. Point light seems like overkill. Just like, what's the most lightweight entity here? Field. I don't know what. I don't know what these do under the hood, so I'm not sure if like using any of these things are gonna. And also, it might communicate the wrong information to someone coming after me. Like, 
Why do you have a nav mesh in your card? Uh, me and my sons are playing Power World together, and so it was fun playing four player like locally and stuff. And you can climb on top of the spears when you're capturing the pals. And as, I know there's a checkbox in there that says like is climbable. Climb or like nav mesh or something like can't ever affect navigation so i was wondering like did they just not like uncheck that so anyways like just there's so much in here that i want to try and avoid maybe this utility object but will that render uh, this could be useful hey well let's see uh, I have a, I have a sneaking suspicion this thing might not build. Uh, you know, like it might not stay in the build. But all right, so here's the risk: is that I don't actually know what the center here is. Like it's pretty challenging to get the center. We can try to do. This is the challenge. I don't know how to see you. Oh, here we go. So this is the back. Consider the back of the card. So if we do this arrow, we want it to be like in the middle. But there's a couple of problems. One, this looks weird. Like it's cutting off some things. The text is facing the right way. And once we do this, this will this will be the basis by which all other items and cards like all the things that we have will render by so like if i get this wrong and then have to come back and nudge it well then we have to fix it potentially on all our other models and stuff and so i don't want to i want to try and think about how this is going to affect downstream and there's other kinds of card frames so we've only been looking at this one card frame for a while but let me bring up the others all right, so here's a quick little view of some of the other card frames. And so this was done in Unreal. Um, and so these are like fully animated. It was basically done. Like we had it. The only thing we I didn't consider done or even working was the text in the card. Like this, before we had the tabs, we had it all crammed into the single pane window here. And this just sucked. Like it was hard to read. It. I mean, I guess it worked, but... I wasn't satisfied with it, and so that was a an issue that we really never solved until recently with the tabs. So, and uh, you know, I was never really satisfied with the graphics. There was no animation uh, in the the little targeting system, but we did have like the movement arrows, and yeah, there was there was some good things apart about it that I do like still, and one of them being that the different card models represent the rarity levels and so it's just kind of fun to see uh the problem with that uh, well i guess it's not a problem because they're all based off the same this one over here on the left Let's see if i can get it to show up yeah so it's based off of this one this is like a busted up one but it's the same model and so really the positioning shouldn't change all that much so if i can get it dead center then that should work for all of these. Okay, yeah, maybe maybe that's fine. So now the question is, how do we get it dead center? And I just, as I'm saying that, I think we can use that measurement tool. And can I zoom in any more than this? Okay, this is as far as I am allowed to zoom in. So I'm going to try to maybe edge to edge here. I'm gonna middle mouse click. I can try and get that measuring tool to show up. That's what I need. It's not showing up. It worked earlier in this map view, but I guess you can't have it in the blueprint mode. Okay. All right, so since I can't have the measure tool inside of a blueprint, which is unfortunate, it seems like a missed opportunity there. Like, why not include the same functionality that you would in the scene? What we'll do is we'll spawn a card in the scene and then we'll uh, use that to to draw the measure and I, I should be able to get the same information I hope if I don't 
scale it. So let's go to. Let's I really should get more comfortable with using the search to save time. Can I drag this in like that? Okay. All right. So there's a way to turn off these like widget things. Okay. I tried to Google it. I couldn't really find anything. They started adding these dumb AI answers, <laughs> which are <laughs> not helpful. Um, anyways, uh, I found it here just by digging in to this menu. I just kind of went through all of these, and the one I'm, I'm wanting to get rid of right now is just sprites. So just hide all, and then there we go. I just, I just need to see. It's really important for this measurement to see the frame edge to edge. So we're going to pull up the BP card here on the side. And I'm going to use the measuring tool. Okay. All right, so let's see. Hopefully I can get the noise down here a little bit. Point 0.1. Let's change it to a little dot there. And then so I can move it around. Cool. So now let's measure. So if we go from this side to this side. Can I hold like shift to make it straight line? No, I guess this is not Photoshop or not any other tool. All right, so seven. Okay, seven. So then half of seven is inconveniently a <laughs> middle number. Uh, so it's like 3.5. So there's three, there's four. So I guess we should slide it over a little bit. Maybe I should get rid of the gear for a second to help the balance in the view. Because it feels like it's not centered. It's... Seven. Three. Yeah, it's tough. Can I like zoom out and get different measurements? No, probably not. So we'll do vertical four. It's a little bit easier. Two. But you know, it doesn't give me precise enough of a measurement. So maybe instead we should scale this up. So if we scale it up a cons considerable rate, like 10, everything should still work. But now, hopefully, we can get more precision. So if it's 70, that's much better. We can work with 35. All right. So if it's 35 here, yeah, there's much less play there. So 35. I think what we want is to put that dot in the middle. And I can't, I don't have enough hands, I guess. I, it's a little difficult, but I'll have to move it over here and come back and just kind of guess it. So I could probably do this mathematically as well. Somehow, like, by getting the edge. All right, so that's 35. So that's close enough to the center. I think I'm okay with that. Next. This, what is the center here? So I think we're going to ignore these little lips here and treat the rectangle like this. So I want to draw from the top to this purple boundary here. So it's 40. Okay, that's good. This is the same number that we had before, just by 10. Let's go for 20. Actually, Feels pretty good. We'll lift it up a, t a nudge. Hopefully, I can lift it up right. Just teensy to seven point. All right, nudge it up the tiniest bit, which I wasn't able to see while I was doing it. So let me. Yeah, I think 
that's pretty good. So it's not it's not the most precise thing, but we've got now a pretty decent centering mechanic there. So I'll just leave that card over there. I don't think it matters. And I can use that for other things. So let's just save everything. Let's pull the card back over here in this other screen. Let's change the viewport back to perspective. And so we have this arrow. We're going to rename it to Center Window Center. Cool. All right. So now we have this object in here that we can reference in the spawn configure card. So we'll pull this and we use that as our world transform target instead. And let's see what that does. Now the, the sizes are going to be wrong, so we'll try to get it. There we go. That's pretty cool. Okay, so now we have this model appearing here, and it's dynamically pulling it, so we'll be able to, to keep track of it. All right, here's another issue that I've run into with the, the player. We'll need to do something like attach it so that it moves with it. I saw this over here. Where is it? Parent. Attach actor to component. So let's do that. Attach actor to component. Let's just try to free. Right here. Attach actor to component. And then we'll grab the parent and again. Windows center. I think it's, we could do like the SK simple as well, which we might have to do. I'm not sure yet. I don't weld. Keep relative, sure. Okay, so let's try that real quick and see if that. All right, so it looks like it's tripping out now. F8. I can see something in the background there. Or, oh, it looks like it just went really tiny. Okay, so see what how to fix that. <laughs> what are we doing over here? Weld simulated bodies, keep relative. Frankly, I, I don't know how this works. It, oh, you know what? I think I know what's going on. It's because I scaled this down to point to point one. So keep world. I'll just say all of them keep world for now. I don't really want to use it for anything other than its calculation over here. Um, and I might even just use this and truly use this one because it's it's a better um, it's a it's better to track this with the with the scale anyways, but we'll see how that pans out. Uh, I guess that didn't work at all. Where did you go? F8. Yeah. Yeah, the positioning relativity is messing it all up. Yeah, I guess it, it causes it to move. I don't know if it tries to keep it. Honestly, I don't know um, what to do there. I'm, I'll try to. We'll keep this. And let's just try keep world. Snaps the target. Okay, that's that's what we want. I want it to stay put, and then if it moves, then I want it to follow. So okay, we got that behavior. Cool. Uh, what's next? It's to fix the rotation. It's obviously bad. So we want to now fix it in the in the asset, this weapon window asset over here. So this is where we want to correct it. And so I think because it's in a blueprint, we can do it in game mode. So I'm going to pull this over here, another window, I'm going to hit play. So now I have this guy and I have this window over here. So I should be able to just rotate and edit, which I, yeah, let me just pull it over here to just not such a, use the hotkeys here and just kind of get it in position. This is finally, this is the part I wanted to reach, like <laughs> finally here after so long. So long, I mean, right? It's been so long. 
Let's minimize this guy a little bit. Get it to fit. It's really the same as the ship, right? We're going to have the same problems, the same uh, sort of style. We can have particle effects and stuff. But kind of find some favorable angle that just looks neat. to jet out. It needs to be in front of the card. Is this world a relative? Hold on. It doesn't seem to be cycling. Either. Huh. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, I needed this one. Took a second for it to work. There we go. Yeah, so we can maybe do that. Let me switch back to local and kind of jet it forward a little bit. There you go. Yeah, something like that. And then we're we're gonna fix this boundary issue. Um, so yeah, I know that it's not uh, perfect because the the model the model's jutting out and like getting in the way in the back, like we want to cut that out. So that's the next thing I'm going to work on. But at least for now, oh my goodness, stop it. At least for now, what we'll have is, we'll have a way to add in these these guns. So let me pull in one more. So let's, let's just, we should now be able to just quickly add them. So I think I have another one called a crate. This one was designed a long time ago. find it real quick. All right, here we go. So we're going to drag this guy in, just as is. There's Bunny Bomb. Yeah, we have some stuff. Let's let's drag some stuff in. Let's do Bunny Bomb. I just did Crate, right? <laughs> Gosh. Uh, build Nanite, sure. This one's definitely animated as well, but we're going to just, just get it in. going to pause again. It takes a while. All right. It, it takes like two minutes to do that. It takes a very long time. All right. So we got this. We'll rename this to Bunny Bomb to match. While it's doing it, too, you can't do anything else. All right, so we have this. Let's take a look at it real quick. Make sure it actually loaded something we can use. It's very tiny. And all of that is going to take some work to, to fix and stuff. So, you know, here we would add Niagara effects and stuff and then look at it in the card. Okay, so there's two things we want to adjust. So for so we're not stepping on each other's toes. We don't want to be coming into the BP card hand every time to be manually adjusting this list here. So it's probably best if we now actually implement this uh, weapons playground blueprint game mode. So right now card hand I think must be firing Event begin play, event tick. What's triggering this? Something is triggering this behavior. I didn't think it it should do anything without cards show cards being called, so something's calling this. BP weapons. Oh, I think I shoved it in the BP weapons camera. So there's a, where is that? Yeah, I just shoved it in the weapons camera for now. So let me take it out of the weapons camera. Start to organize this a little bit better. Once we get this part done here, we can, it should be a lot smoother. Uh, where did I put it? Not really, not really sure where I put it. I guess I'll just search for it. I don't know. Is it case sensitive or something? Wow. 
where is it? Where is that? Asset BP weapon camera. Here it is, but where are you? How can I find it? Here we go. And some of these things. I need to know where I'm putting this so that I can. Yeah, it's annoying. I just want to like, where where is this? Okay, yeah. The issue is that I was typing in weapons, which then it's BP weapon camera, and that is in art menu desk. Okay. So, all right. So we have this, and basically, when this thing is spawned, it will. It, ha it knows the card hand. It has this card hand object here. And then it's just calling all of these things right away. So that, I guess this is fine for now. Before we call show cards, to make this generic, we don't, yeah, we don't want to do this in here. I think that's, that's why. So we want to let's pull show cards out, and we can move it to the uh, this this guy over here because we want to reuse this in the other main scene. And so if we start putting test logic in here, then it's gonna it's gonna it'll get in our way in other scenes too. So we're gonna remove show cards. We don't want it to do show cards anymore. So let's do that. So now when we play, nothing happens. So it's messed up. Cool. That's actually what we want. So now we have this uh, BPGM, and we can add a variable in here for this. Uh, we'll call it test camera. Try and think of a BP weapons. Uh, keep doing that. Weapon camera. There we go. So we have an object reference. We'll make this open like that. I. I I think we can mess with that in the scene. I could be wrong. So we come over here, it might expose it. Let's see. Test. I don't see a way to. I don't see a way to make it global. So that might just might just be a deficiency in my knowledge here. It's like I don't actually know. How to add things to this directly. I don't know how to affect the scene, that game mode object directly. And I've done it before. So if we look at our previous thing, core game mode is GI. Is this game instance? So this runs, and it has some things, but we're not, I guess we're always calling it via blueprint code. Spawner, yeah, all of this is being done in code. We're not messing around with editor dragging and dropping. So maybe it's not the best tool for this. That's certainly a challenge. I, I can get it. I can get the, grab the object, um, which I don't really want to do. But So if we go to set this, I can say find in scene or something. There's something like find objects of type. Okay, here's this find by class. So uh, this isn't great, but I actually don't know what else to do here. Weapons. Weapon camera. All right, so here's this. Maybe this will do. We just set this. Um, so now that we have this, we should be able to make modifications to it. So we can call things like show show cards. But you know, show cards isn't exposed because it's not the uh, it's not the BP card hand that we actually want to edit, we, which we're kind of that's what we're wanting to test, right? So we'll come in here. And we can just expose this. Actually, no, we can't. <laughs> 
I can't wait. Hold on. Close that. We don't need that anymore. Let's see. Destroy component. Get owner. Get parent component. DP card hand. Can I get the component and do things to it? Similarly, to get component by class. I don't know if I like that, but it doesn't really seem like it even shows up in here. DP card hand. Weird. No, that doesn't do it. Get a component. Uh, yeah, I don't see it. So the only way I know how to deal with this. Uh, I figured I'd try something new here. I mean, it didn't work. Like you can't just directly do it with things that aren't like variables. And what's interesting to me is that it is a variable. Like automatically, they set it up in this like variable section. But it's like you have to add something here to make it exposable. You see, like it says, it treats it like a variable, but yet you can't get it. So, to, in order to get it, you have to do like this. Oh, goodness. It's kind of sticking on me a little bit. So, we can do BP card hand. We can do object reference, which you see it's like the same thing. And it could like do this. Um, but it's, like, it's kind of bothersome. Like, why would I have to do this if it's already there? See that? Like... Yeah, it's a little wonk. But I suppose if it works then. So that's one way to do it. The other the other way is that I can ex create a function that then calls the underlying function. But um, I think for a test scene, it's like, let's see what we're going to call this. Just call it card hand. So you can come over here. We should be able to grab the card hand. Look at that. I saw one that said. Does that, does that work? My goodness. And we could do show. Interesting. Yeah, see, so this is a child actor component reference. So then you'd have to like do this thing like get. I, I forgot how you uh, unpack this. I have to look that up again. But over here, this is the this is the reference. So you can just do show cards here. So so it looks like it does work, um, but for whatever reason earlier when I was typing, I couldn't find it. Uh, but anyways, we'll just. Cut this. Okay, so now we can do show cards. But before we do show cards, um, we want to remove the uh, what now? Context pin is invalid. Wow. I don't know what that's watching. I mean, can you just say the scene? To get well, what is this? This isn't really. I guess that would be this. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. There was another. Um, I saw in the BPGM poem. I think it like looped over all the objects of a certain type. Get actors with interface. Yeah, so maybe you can do that. Get actors of class. Weapon, camera, out actors. So yeah, we'll just and grab the first one or something. I don't really want to loop. Can I just like pop or find? Or is there some kind of filter? 
Yeah, this is, that's not. I just want the first one. I don't know how to just grab one out of an array. Maybe I can split. Filter, filter array. Oh, filter by class. Yeah, that's not. Can't filter by a function. Yeah, it's not. Don't know. <laughs> how, to, how to just. It's only going to be one, right? But like, I don't know how to just. I'm going to have to like use a for loop just to. I can do for loop with break. And just automatically break the body. Um, so like loop body break. So then that'll get it to run just once. Yeah, I guess that's I guess that's gonna be the way to just do this for now until I learn how to learn how to pull one, find one. Get all actors of class and get actor just one. Yeah, I guess it, yeah, it's just list operations there. So okay, well, hopefully that'll work. Uh, so let's just see. If, okay, so at least it takes that. All right, now the next thing is we want to remove this test code here. Like we don't want this, so we can trash this. We want that to be blank now. We'll come back over here, and now we will set that value. So we will go set card defs, and then this is where we'll create that, that data. We'll do it right here inside this, this little test object. And then we'll do make S card mod, or is it make array, make list? I forgot how it worked. Array, yeah, make array. And so then you can do make S card mod. And so here you have this like thing you can manually define. And so you can create test data like this. So you can, once you have this set up, then this can get passed in here. So from this point on, we can now just work with the BP, GM, weapons, playground. And this will not collide because if I'm working in another scene, I'm not going to be messing with this because it's dedicated to this scene. And then we're also not going to have to keep editing card hand because this is a variable. So I can pass in different data and we can use it uh, without, without interfering with each other on a regular basis. So okay, so we can call this thing, you know, the first one we want it to be called railgun. And just something, all right? And then, which this doesn't seem to be working for some reason, so I'll look at that later. So we call it level six, ID is rel gun, minus gun, okay. So there's that. Uh, now we can add a pin. We can add another test in here. So we can do make S card mod. And so what was it, the bunny bomb? So we can say this is like 12 or something. That's not, but. Bunny bomb, description, boom. Okay, then uh, bunny bomb. And it was just say quality, I guess we can do uh, just one. No, the six, because it's a model. Why is it not giving me the cursor? So we have this, so now it'll spawn two cards. And so then we could just keep going there. So this should do it uh, going forward. Can put a little note in here. So then we can we can test the quality levels out and stuff, and this will be much faster to iterate. So we can add all the card qualities in here and just turn them on and off, test the animations, um, see how it how it feels, how they look next to each other, the colors, etc. We can spend a lot of time refining this here, uh, and then turning things on and off, and that's a lot 
smoother of an experience, I think. Okay, so we have that. Now what's going to happen is I think it'll spawn and the second one will have nothing. Oh, it didn't spawn. Well, where'd you go? I don't know what happened. Is there any message log errors? Oh, wow. Oh, here we go. Trying to read property test camera node. Okay, what's this error? Access none. Trying to read property test camera. So it's not finding it. I thought it was sitting right there in the scene. BP weapon camera. Yeah, I, I guess it's not finding it. I don't really understand how that's possible. Yeah, this isn't. Finds all actors in the world of specified class. Slow operation. Don't lose every frame. Yeah, really, so. Oh, okay. Well, that'll do it. Just didn't pass it through. Okay, so now what happened? Still try to access non card hand. So you are card hand isn't being set. So if we go to the camera, let's close some of these things. You should be getting set quite early. I think what we're dealing with a race condition, perhaps like this is event begin play. And then that's also running on event begin play, and this isn't getting set quickly enough. So maybe this is a case where we just go ahead and uh, actor object reference. So there's a way to pull the um, out of the the parent. So yeah, maybe this was a. We don't need to do this. Yeah, go ahead. I'll fix it in a second. We can use the other way. It's just tedious to I have to have to remember how to do the whole conversion thing and I, I don't remember off the top of my head. I guess it's this. Maybe target. So child actor component reference object. So we have this, where are you? Wow, I am having trouble finding this. Okay, so I think it's this, yeah. So we have this child actor component. And then there's, yeah, there's a name. You have to do this and I forgot what it's called. Child actor component, actor object reference. So we had to call that. Yeah, it's the same thing here. Okay, so we need to. I could probably like copy that, but let me try to figure it out. So over here, instead of just card hand. Test camera. So then we'll get get BP get BP card hand. Child actor component reference, and then we will cast to BP. So we have to adjust it before casting it. So we just cast a BP card hand. You have to do something like child actor component reference, child actor, actor object reference. So we have to get it actor object reference. Get 
get child actors. You have to do this, actor object reference, and then you can cast. Yeah, so don't don't love that, uh, but it does work. It's just, you know, this is the, the kind of thing where they like try and sell you like, oh, you can, you don't have to learn programming to to do this, but that's programming. Like that's you have to understand programming concepts to do this. Like it's not you can't escape it. Uh, so which you know I don't mind, but it's like just tell people. Just tell people that it's the same thing as programming. You just don't get to use text. You're using boxes instead. All right. Uh, let's see, a BB card hand. So then we should be able to set, then we have to set the target over here as well. Okay. And that should, that should hopefully work. And that should hopefully eliminate the race condition. There we go. Yeah, so now we have this showing up. So the bunny bomb, it should fail because there's no, um, the hover is broken, but the uh, the bunny bomb won't show up because the uh, graphic hasn't been added to the, the data table. So now that we have this thing going, we pulled in the weapon for bunny bomb. So like railgun here, we have a BP weapon window railgun. So we can do the same thing here. With the blueprint. So BP weapon window railgun. No, bunny bomb. Bunny bomb. And then uh, we can make this class derive from BP card window. What is it? Yeah, BP card window. So we can do that. Can pull in this bunny bomb static mesh. I get this scene root, I suppose, as much as you can. Okay. So we can scale this up. I guess it's too small. 10. All right. So here we are. And this isn't the animated version, so it's not as cool. Um, it gets really neat when it's animated. So we'll get to that. Now we have this in here. Uh, this by itself still will not work. So we have to make sure that we go to the tables and then create the reference. So there's card window ref. And we'll want to add a row. So come to data table here. So instead of other gun, one, just rename this to funny bomb six. Is this like the highest quality level? And this class is now incorrect. So we can go pull that up, save, save, check out, cool. Uh, and then now it should work. So here we go. We can kind of clean it up. So, let's get the scene going so we can see both at the same time. Pull this guy out. Just kind of fix it. Come on, hotkeys, work with me. Sometimes it just takes a second to like update, but. Hotkeys like aren't working all of a sudden. Oh. Oh, this is like maybe the front. I, I think they're the front is yeah, since it's symmetrical, it's all right. I'll get this angle going. So these will be flat. It won't be sticking up like that. So I'll try and keep that in mind while I'm doing this. So I might have to zoom out a little bit more on this. Scale might even not be great. Let's mess with the scale. Yeah, so something like that. Oops. Something like that. I rotate it. Yeah, it'll be animating. So, like that. So, this one will be really good. To have like particle effects because there's a huge background that we can use, but yeah, it'll be kind of wobbling and rotating. And there's there's an example animation of us somewhere in our like archive 
Discord or, you know, but anyways, this is, yeah, so we have something there. So I can close that down, just compile save, I'll close this for now. Save, play, so there we go. Now the hover is really broken, I don't know why it's so bad. And then, so to add the, some more cards back, I can come in here, I can add some pins. And so I think these will fail, I'm not entirely sure, but you know, we can just kind of mess around now. see how this works and then ideally what I'm imagining is we will we'll do this but you know we'll copy this and have so here's the real gun quality six and then we can test quality five we can test quality four and see see them back like side to side and you know can do nice little screenshots and then like update people and let them know like oh here's all our graphics coming together finally after like three years so yeah feels good uh, I think so what I'm going to do this video is super long I'm going to compile this down send it out but I'm also going to chop off the last half that just adds the weapon so I'll, I'll make like a short video and then I'll have the full long one that explains this whole process to get us here and so that way you know just at your leisure you can learn the full breadth of it